So one of the most common problems regarding to blocks in AutoCAD, it's the problem with wipeouts. Yes. So for people who are starting to learn AutoCAD, again, this is aimed to uh, total beginners to understand some of these problems regarding to blocks and how to fix them or troubleshoot them. So wipeout, to summarize briefly what it is, is a way to hide or mask mask objects. Like for instance, I have this hatch over here. And instead of trimming or breaking my hatch, I will use a wipeout. For instance, like this block over here that has a wipeout that can hide or mask what is behind. So that way I don't waste time uh, trimming or breaking my hatch. Now that's the, the simplified concept, but what about a problem with wipeouts? For instance, right here, I can see that the wipeout is showing in front of my tenant sign text. And that's a problem because we want to see that text and I only can see it when hover over it. So that's a very common problem, especially if you have other drawings and you try to copy and then paste blocks that contain a wipeout inside another drawing. So let me open this block to kind of explain you why this is happening and how we can prevent this or fix it. So let's open this block again uh, with right click and pick in block editor. You could also double click on it if the block doesn't contain an attribute. So I'm gonna double click and simply say okay to open the property, I mean the block editor environment. As you can see, my text again is not being seen so what I need to do, this means is basically that my wipeout, which is right here, for any weird reason, jumped to the front of my block and not stayed in the back. So that's sometimes an AutoCAD glitch, usually on versions such as 2014, 2015. I think they fixed already this glitch of wipeout showing in the front of the block. They fix it already for versions such as 2016, 2017, and so on. But if you are still using uh, older AutoCAD, you should know this. So over, over here, what first we need to do to fix this wipeout in front of blocks is, of course, select the wipeout. So make sure the wipeout is being selected and we can send it to the back with the draw order command. So for the draw order, the shortcuts are simply DR and we can press enter and send or pick the option to back. So once we do that, of course, our block looks how it's supposed to look now with the tenant sign. However, this would be only a temporary fix. We need to do an extra step here to do to really fix this block and never ever have this problem of the wipeout coming to the front again. So the step is to select our block geometry and deselect the wipeout. So you can see right here, if I select only this geometry, that's the polyline, but the wipeout is behind it, is behind over here. So I can deselect, I can deselect holding the shift on my keyboard can see I have two geometries. One is the polyline and one is the wipeout. So I can deselect holding the shift and clicking on my polyline. And that way I will only have the wipeout selected. So what we want to do is select our block geometry in this case, but the wipeout. So once we do that, we can move our geometry using the regular move command with the shortcut M. And we can move it to a distance of, let's say, you know, a random distance, for, for instance, five feet, five, five feet down. And then you can see our wipeout, it's still there. So, but what we need to do is move back our geometry. So move uh, with the shortcut M, enter. And in this case, instead of selecting my geometry, I'm gonna use a trick to use the P for previous, and I'm gonna press enter. And, and then one more time, enter to accept 
that selection. So I'm gonna move it back again, five feet up and boom. So this is a trick to make AutoCAD believe that your geometry, in this case, our polyline and our text was created last. So that way the wipeout will never jump in front of your blocks. So that's a trick that we need to do if we want to stop this issue in AutoCAD of wipeout showing in front of your blocks. So that's all we need to do. We can close our block and save the changes here and boom, that way we hopefully will never have ever this AutoCAD block problem again. Hello there. Welcome again to an AutoCAD lazy learning show where we teach you AutoCAD uh, with some of the basic concepts so you can understand it as a total beginner. All right. So that's the first common, very, very common and popular problem regarding to blocks. And we're going to jump to the number two now. All right. So the number two most common problem uh, regarding to blocks is the idea of why my dashed lines or hidden lines are not showing up. For example, in this elevation, I want my signage boundary or this rectangle to show in dashed lines or hidden lines, not continuous like it's showing right now. So in order to do that, we need to kind of understand how blocks work because if now we will keep trying and trying to make these hidden lines, it wouldn't work. For example, because this is a block, it's not a regular uh, polyline. So let me troubleshoot that. Again, we want this rectangle or this boundary to show as dashed lines or hidden lines. So, and let me show you, of course, what you probably will do as a total beginner is create a layer. So right now we can see this is on a wrong layer. It's, it's on the layer text. So let's fix that. So let's open the layer palette by opening the LA, um, the LA shortcut. And here we have our layer palette. So what probably many, again, people who are learning AutoCAD, they will create a layer, right? With this icon over here. And probably will rename their layer as, you know, something like signage. And of course, assign a color, assign, uh, let's say, assign this color over here and change the line type, right? To be, instead of continuous, to be something like dash or hidden. So let's change it to hidden and click OK. So once this person created the signage with the correct line type, hidden in this case, of course, this beginner person will assign that object, right? That layer, sorry, to that object, sign it. So, and as you can see, nothing really happened. Why this is not working? Why my boundary is not showing as hidden lines or dashed lines? Well, again, we need to troubleshoot and kind of understand this block. And to do so, let's open that up. So let me open this block by Again, right click on it, pick block editor, or you can double click on the block itself. So first, the first thing that we need to do is inspect our geometry. For instance, I'm gonna select uh, my polyline right here, and we can see that the line type is overridden. So it says continuous. So that's wrong. This shouldn't say continuous because now uh, it's kind of overridden inside the block. So let's fix that. So instead of saying continuous, let's say by layer. So that's one thing that we can do, but look what happened once we close and save the changes for this block. So let's close, save the changes to signage and boom, it's not really working. Why? Well, that's why again, we need to start understanding how blocks work. Even though we fixed the line type itself, there are other properties that might be also overridden. So let's inspect those properties. So let's open this block again, double clicking on the block and let's see what's going on here. So again, we're trying to do all of this step by step so you can understand why this problem is happening of the dash lines or hidden lines not showing as it's supposed to, to be. So let's again select in this case our geometry 
and we can see that the layer that this geometry is assigned is a signage. But wait a second, we just created a new layer, we call it signage, and then we assign it a line type, in this case hidden. So why this geometry will have to be on another different layer? That's also wrong. So what we need to do is, whenever we uh, create geometry inside a block, we need to place it on the layer zero. So that is, so if we change our geometry, it will, I mean, if we assigned a layer to our entire block, it will, it will get the properties of that layer. So that's why we need to put it on layer zero. So look what happened now once we close and save the changes. Boom, now it's working. We successfully troubleshoot this block to show hidden lines on the boundary. So that's why you need to start learning some of these concepts so you can fix your blocks whenever you have these type of problems. Check first if some of the properties are overridden, such as the line type, then go ahead and move also to the layer might be overridden, make sure it's on layer zero. So that way when you assign or place it on the correct layer, you will also get some of those properties, all right? So hopefully you understood that concept and you can easily fix your, your blocks whenever you have this problem. So the third problem is about colors. Yes, so we always try to assign colors or different colors to our blocks to maybe show them darker or lighter or maybe simply for visual representation to distinguish them, right, from maybe new to existing. So in any case, we use colors to emphasize changes on our blocks. So let me show you here what happened when, for instance, let's say I want to uh, change the color of one of these uh, blocks. In this case, this is a multi-liter, but there is a block inside this multi-liter, so we can treat this as a block problem too. And let's say this, of course, we can check that's on the A node layer, all of them are. A node and so on. So look what happened if I want to emphasize this block and simply change the color of only this individual block. I don't want to change my color of the whole A R node layer because if I do that, if I change that to color something like red, everything will change, but I don't want that. So let me undo that with control Z. I only want to emphasize this specific block in this case is a multi-liter again but there is a block inside so look what happened if i try to do that if i go to color on my properties and change it to red as you can see something weird is happening here only our liter color is changing to red but not the rest so what's going on there well first we Remember we said that there is a block inside this uh, multiliter, so we need to reach that block and check some other properties again. So now hopefully you are uh, starting to understand that whenever we have a block problem, the easiest solution is to fix some of their properties. So in order to access again the block itself, because right now this is a multiliter, let me copy one of these with control C and paste it with control v right i'm gonna paste it over here like so so again we have uh, this multiliter to access the block that it's inside what we need to do is explode this multiliter using the x shortcut to to access the explode command and now we can if we can take a look at it we can access the block as you can see from my properties palette that's the block itself. We can now edit this block, but look what happened when I double click this block to edit it. We will have a attribute editor uh, window, but we don't want this. We want to get inside the block editor itself. So let's cancel that. And to do that, let's right click and pick block editor. So this is when a block has an attribute. The only way to access the block editor is by right clicking on it. So over here, again, 
if we check some of our properties um, so let me select this and if we go to the color option or layer first we can see that's on layer zero and that's correct because we just talked about it that uh, this should be a hundred percent on layer zero so that's good but the color also is by layer so here's an special case when you need to understand uh, when you need to put your objects uh, inside a block on a color by layer or there is another option also color by block so right now you saw that if we picked our or if we place our geometry in a color by layer option we are not able to assign a color to only one of our blocks you just saw that so that's when we need the second option the second option is of course i'm going to select everything here all of my geometry and instead of color by layer i'm going to change this to color by block all right so look what happened once I do that. So I'm gonna, of course, close my blog editor and I'm gonna save the changes. So look what happened now. My blocks over here is showing red as I intended it in the first time. Again, so this color by, by sorry, <laughs> yeah, layer by color means that I can easily change many of my blocks individually to colors that I wish. In this case, this is an example, but I'm changing individual colors and you can see that I don't have problems regarding to colors. Again, let me know in the chat what do you think about these very common uh, AutoCAD block problems.